Welcome everybody. Today's episode, I want to go over the awards races and kind of do a nice quick episode on some of the big time races going down the wire and stuff to keep an eye on these last few sims, especially for guys like me are pretty much out of the playoffs because something exciting to look forward to. So we have AL MVP. We'll start with the big one here. AL MVP. Uh, you can kind of look at a few different categories. And if you look at this page, some of the standout statistics, some things that jump off the page are obviously these big home run totals here. Vladdy Guerrero hitting almost 50 points better than every other player in the AL is pretty ridiculous from the qualified hitters. You also have a pretty big on base percentage. So obviously Vladdy's going to be in the running there. You have some pretty huge um, war totals here out of a couple guys uh, hitting wise. You have Urbina had a standout season, a five and a half war season so far in Oakland. Really broke out this year. He's been a really solid player for a couple years now, but really upped it to uh, being like a real star this year. Oh. What a monster season out of him. If you look at uh, Pena, just had a huge season two. He kind of slowed down a, a little bit in the second half. If you look at the splits. Uh, actually, no, sorry, that's incorrect. I thought his uh, first half was actually bigger, but I guess it was more the second half he turned up. Uh, turned up real big, 326, 314 batting averages. So just a monster season out of him too. Uh, and then you have, obviously, Vladdy Guerrero's season just crazy. 38 home runs so far, uh, almost seven war. He's got 350 batting average, just outrageous uh, contact there. Uh, awesome. Pena's having an even bigger season out of uh, more, a lot more power, uh, more home runs and doubles and stuff. He didn't hit quite as many singles, but uh, just a monster season out of him with a huge plus 300 ice. So uh, obviously the huge home run total there, 56. Next up, we um, we have Bannister there. Bannister's an absolute superstar too. Really broke out in a big way the last couple seasons and turned into a mega star there. He had a little bit of trouble with injuries. He only played 53 games a couple years ago. Last year he was really healthy and played really well. And then this year he just missed uh, 20 or 30 games. But the dude is an absolute star when healthy. Uh, really upped his power this year. A big change. You can see he had almost 75 points to his ISO there. So just a huge, huge season out of him. And then obviously Bellinger, who's probably the front runner for the award. Bellinger had... A monster 53 home run so far. Just his 500th career home run too, which would be a huge deal. Uh, really give him a lot of publicity in real life if he hit that right down the stretch of an MVP race, which is pretty crazy. 32 years old. Dude has a chance to get like six, 700 uh, home runs in his career. 355 ISO at this age. It's just insane. 355 ISO is, uh, like you see, his career numbers is just off the charts there. Uh, as pretty much as good as in that 12 war season he had. So I guess he was just a little better stealing bases and defensively that year. 212 WRC plus that year. It's just crazy. So obviously uh, Bellinger's probably a good pick. Bannister has a pretty good, um, pretty monster season too. But he isn't in the playoffs. So I, Bellinger does have that kind of tiebreaker. Um, Pena also, uh, the teammate of Bellinger. He doesn't quite have the defensive war. Uh, so he has like a one point lower in war total. But uh Traditionally, this is pretty big offensive award, and uh, statistically, his offensive numbers just crazy. Him and Vladdy both just been insane, and uh, Urbina there has obviously had a really good year. But uh, and pitching wise, I mean, you have you just kind of will take a glance at the AL MV, or Cy Young after, but uh, I think JP Massey has a pretty good uh, argument too to be in the running. I think he'd have to probably make the playoffs to have a chance to win MVP. I think uh, he'll probably be a front runner to so Cy Young, but. Probably not going to vote a pitcher MVP if he's uh, team's not in the playoffs, even though it's more of an individual award. I think it's just kind of one of those things. So uh, he probably, I would go with Ballinger, but I uh, just want to kind of give a little, doesn't really matter my picks. I just thought it'd be fun to kind of talk about some of these guys, and a lot can change in the last couple of weeks, depending on who gets hot. But um, well, I think right now those guys are definitely all pretty deserving, pretty huge seasons out of all of them. The qualified rookies if for rookie of the year, uh, this award is pretty interesting in the AL. I mean, I think we're going to have a runaway winner here in Jim Spar. Jim Spar is just crazy. He's turned into a star pitcher even faster than I thought he would. His control really played really well this year. He only walked 9.9% of guys after walking 13% of guys last year and only double A. And then he jumps up to the majors and cuts his walk percentage. I'm sure, a lot of that has to do with Adley Rushman being such a good catcher. And his control did go up um, rating-wise too, but a uh, combination of those two things really improved on that. Just turned into a 200-inning beast. Uh, he'll be in the running for the Cy Young too. Just a huge season, and Baltimore is in the playoff race right in the thick of it there as uh, one of the best teams in the AL. So I think that award is... Uh, Pretty uh, straightforward, but you also do want to kind of just uh, go over some of the other guys who had really good seasons too. Romero looks like a beast for Detroit. 
I think this is a guy that could probably hit 50 home runs in a season with his power rating. Um, just a crazy, crazy low strikeout rate, too. For a guy that hits the ball that hard to only strike out 14% of the time, looks like they got a star in their hands there. Not great defensively, but good enough to uh, get by in right field for sure. And almost a 50 contact tool, so we should make enough contact to be able to put up some Joey Gallo type seasons. Probably like four or five war, like 50 home runs um, type things. I think Detroit Stadium's a little tougher to hit home runs, so it might neuter those numbers a little bit. But would expect a pretty similar career to Joey Gallo there. Some big seasons, a lot of three, four war. Guys like that are so consistent that have good eye and good power. And good avoid K really helps too. They're just always going to hit. Even if they only hit like 190, 200, they're going to be productive just based on how well they uh, take plate appearances. And they're always going to get their 20, 30 home runs minimum, even on a bad year. So just a really beast, uh, beastly player there. Seymour had a huge year for a playoff team there in Houston. Um, well, not in the playoffs yet, actually. It's a pretty tight race, but uh, they're seeded to be there. Seymour is a freak. Seymour is like a center fielder playing right field. Uh, they got Ballinger and him, both in 65 range. They're both really good uh, athletes and both play center. Um, he's been playing a lot more corner this year uh, in 120 games. Hasn't really played much center at all, but uh, could play there probably on some teams. 20 home runs out of a guy with that kind of athleticism. He only stole five bases, but he probably has potential to steal a little bit more. But uh, yeah, that guy had a really nice season there. Next up, we have Balnick, who really broke out. This is a monster season out of him. Guy hit almost 320, uh, showed some major power, over 200 ISO, 145 OPS plus, 2.7 more uh, in only half season there. 70 games is just crazy. So Balnick had a really, really monster year. Not a great athlete running-wise, but actually has pretty good range and arm ratings. Really, really nice defense on corner outfield there. Could play left or right and even get away in center field a little bit. He has a huge, huge bat, though. If you look, 55 contact, major gap power, major avoid K, only strikes out 13% of the time. Big time power, too. Should be able to hit 20, 25 home runs most seasons with that ratings, maybe as much as 30 if he played a full 150 games. Uh, it's really, really, really good uh, mid-fifth round pick there from Texas. Uh, huge season there. Kirby had another big uh, year, too. Kirby had... Um, Debuted a little bit last year. Always really successful, like double-A, triple-A players you can see here. Bunch of 2-3 war, consistent seasons. Just a really solid all-around player. Good runner, good fielder. Uh, average bat to tad above average. So just a really uh, solid season out of him, too. And Rattray had a two-war season there in Cleveland as a star center fielder, as a rookie. Had 70 range. Big-time runner. Huge uh, huge base runner, stolen base combination, huge avoid K, only struck out 15% of the time, hit uh, 245. Wouldn't be shocked at all if his numbers just skyrocketed next year. Looks like he's still not as potentials quite yet, close to 60 potential contact. His power just got to 55 now, um, and at the end of the year, his eye. So it looks like he's a lot better player now than he was at the start of the year. We'll see if we can see that in the batting splits. The start of the year... Um, yeah, so he's hit pretty consistently, 260, 260 his last few months here after he got those ratings bumps. His ISO is almost a 300 this month in a full 25 games. So really wouldn't surprise me next year if he broke out and had like a four or five more season. It looks like a potential star there in Cleveland. Really, uh, really nasty ratings there. And then pitching-wise, like we talked about Spar, uh, Tyler Gow would be probably rookie of the year in a lot of seasons. Guy had a monster season in the bullpen in Chicago. Guy had a 1.0 whip. Huge strikeout totals. Guys only hit 190 off him. 3.9 war projected out of the bullpen. It's just crazy. We'll be in the running for reliever of the year. Him and Kyle Mueller. Mueller, we'll talk about that later. Uh, should be in the running there. Both had huge seasons there. And uh, Next up, we have Perez in New Orleans. Perez had a huge season there, too. 1.1 whip. 25% of guys struck out. Guys only hit 230 off him. Huge 80 fastball. Just monstrous ratings there. The movement is the only thing that doesn't have a super high rating. Three really good pitches. Looks like he has potential to have a fourth. Uh, just a really huge season out of him, too, for a young New Orleans team. Next up, we have Cantu. Cantu had a huge season as one of Texas's best pitchers. Uh, 80 curveball. Love that. Uh, he has really good numbers there across the board. Just the home runs are a little high, um, so it juiced the FIP up a little bit, but uh, has potential to be really, really good. As a lefty, could be like a 3-4 war player every season. Potentially even better if he can uh, get to that 60 control. Just a really, really good talent there. And then you have LeBron here in Oakland. is a huge talent. Kind of flies under the ra radar a little bit there in Oakland, playing behind Hartman and uh, Pittman there. Two really, really superstar pitchers. Uh, LeBron looks like a really nasty number three, though, for the next few years. Those guys are just going to be like a nasty three-headed monster. LeBron 
Philip Brown has really, really nice ratings right across the board. A huge explosive fastball over the top splitter fork ball combo is really interesting. A lot of 12 to 6 movement pitches. Just a huge talent there too. So really, really huge year for AL talent from the uh, rookies there. Uh, really cool to see. Uh, we'll jump over the NL. The NL MVP is going to be a really interesting race here. We have a crazy, crazy statistical season of a few different guys here. Poisson is on fire and looks like he was running away from the MVP, but he slowed down just a bit these last few weeks, and Soto had a huge couple weeks. So if you look at the war totals, uh, Soto and Tatis have made it a little bit of a race and doesn't look like a unanimous uh, Poisson right now. Um, if you look at the war totals, you just have so many guys that had just huge seasons. Tatis, Leto, Freeman. Like, Freeman had 149 RBIs, and there's still two weeks to go. Just a crazy, crazy total. The guy hit uh, 320 in his age 38 season. Just insane. 7.0 war on pace for 7.6. Just a monster year out of him. Out of a first-place Atlanta team. Poisson's also in a first-place team, so it's going to be really hard to win that award over Poisson. The guy having a 315 ISO as a shortstop with elite defense, 25 bags uh, stolen there, and almost 50 home runs. So, I mean, that's just one of the craziest seasons you'll ever see. That's like a prime A-Rod type statistical season. Really, really freakish. One of the best players I've ever seen. So he's been my pick all season. Um, he started hot, just never slowed down. Uh, but it uh, would take a big couple of weeks here. Soto would have to probably hit like six home runs in his last 12 games to kind of make it close, I think. Uh, he's a really, really deserving MVP candidate too if it wasn't for like a historical year from Poisson. Juan Soto had a huge season, just crazy. 4.78 pitch per plate appearances, one of the highest I've ever seen. 200 OPS plus, actually higher than his MVP season last year. Wasn't quite the base runner that he was last year. I don't know how much that affects the war total. I'm just trying to figure out why the war total would be so much lower. But uh, it's not too far off. It should be like close to nine there. But yeah, just a really monstrous, monstrous season out of him. Walking almost 20% back-to-back years. He's really reached the peak of his career at uh, 27, 28 years old in his prime there. Hitting 40 back-to-back 40 home run seasons. Just um, one of the best bats you'll ever see. Just an incredible, incredible talent. Tatis has had one of the craziest second halves I've ever seen. The dude started kind of slow. In the second half, he's just exploded exploded if you look at his batting ratings his splits are nuts he's hit 374 and 339 these last two months and then he started this year and he's hitting 310 so uh one of the craziest second halves all i've ever seen i think he only had like two maybe he was on pace for like four 3.9 four war in like june and so he's pretty much had like five war in just like july and august and half of september just to show how insane he's been those last couple months so really uh Really special season out to him, too. Almost as good as that year he won MVP a couple years ago. Dude's uh, already almost at 60 war. Next up, we have Jared Leto. Or, sorry, Jared Leto, <laughs> the actor. Luke Leto has had three consecutive seven war seasons in his age. 22, 23, and 24-year-old seasons, which is just crazy. The dude's hitting 280. He was hitting 225 last time I looked um, at his stats early in the year. So really, really picked it up a little bit with the contact thing. Uh, hit a career high 14 home runs. He is walking at 12% clip. It was actually at uh, only 9% last year. So really, really big improvement there. And the strikeouts are way down. So cool. offensively, the uh, really weird because his batting average was just so high last year. But then the approach was so much worse. So really, really weird. Um, I guess he just essentially hit the ball a lot harder this year um actually no he didn't yeah i don't know what the heck happened there that's so strange so, yeah i just had a lot better plate approach but just didn't make quite as much contact um really good uh season regardless it's just the, one of those things the stats will kind of differentiate from year to year but just a really huge season out of him that's an interesting uh statistical season then yeah the atlanta teammates up there in war at seven six point four uh, you got uh like i said freeman if you're like everyone likes to go by war totals but i think traditionally if this was uh, an award, I think Freeman would have won in like the early 2000s. People used to love those counting stats, the RBIs and home runs. Guy hitting 42 home runs, like 150 RBIs and hitting 320. That's just insane. That's some Maggie Cabrera type numbers. So 
I think he should definitely be in consideration too, even though the war toll is quite a bit lower for him than these other stars. Um, just all those, like same as the AL, all these guys are deserving. Anytime you have a seven plus war season, you're just deserving of MVP. It just so happens there's a lot of superstars in their primes right now. Uh, Soto and Tatis just in the prime of their career, superstars, 28 years old. Then you got the young gun shortstops here, Puas and Leto are like 24 years old or something like that. And then you got the old gun here, Acuna, also at like 30 years old, 29. So a bunch of guys in their late 20s in their primes. And you get the old bag here and Freeman just having a monster year and a couple young shortstops. So really, really, really talented uh, group of guys here. In the NL, if you look at the stats here, you see some really high totals. I love it. So no, <laughs> no MVP for him, but a pretty monster season out of my boy. So no there, leading the league in home runs in the NL. So uh, shout out too to this. We'll talk about this in a second, actually, the rookie here. Uh, Cesar Ramirez is just a huge, huge season. Um, we'll talk about that here, the qualified rookies. So yeah, rookie of the year. Uh, looks like it's going to be pretty close on the pitching side of things. Parton, Maurice, Catlin all had monster seasons, uh, but I don't think anyone's going to be able to take it from Ramirez here. Ramirez is going to win a batting title, which, I mean, if you're winning a batting title, you almost have to win rookie of the year. That's just an incredible accomplishment, especially when it's 374, which is, I think, the highest average in TLG history. I don't know if anyone's ever hit over, um, I think... Gavin Lux hit close to that one year for LA. Let's look here. 351. That's the highest I remember. I don't think Bellinger or Trout or anything have ever been up there. So, yeah, I'd say that is the highest batting average in TLG in the eight-year history so far. Uh, pretty insane accomplishment out of a rookie. 77 RBIs. Doesn't hit for a ton of power or doesn't have a crazy plate approach, but just hits so many baseballs and just doesn't strike out the uh i imagine it's a league leading 6.6 percent uh k percentage so just insane insane eye hand coordination the craziest thing about this guy is if you look at these stats it's almost exactly 10 percent between his batted ball and strikeout ratios so that means 90 percent of plate appearances he's not striking out or walking so it's like literally makes contact that much that he's like either Hitting the ball to an out or getting a base hit 90% of the time. It's just one of the craziest things you've ever seen. I don't, I don't know if you'll ever see a season like that in real life. I can't imagine. Uh, it's just an incredible, incredible stat. So just a ridiculous season out of him. Uh, kind of a runaway rookie of the year. But you do have some shout-outs to a couple other big seasons. Ben Jackson, 70 range. Huge defensive player. Uh, awesome base runner. Really good all-around season. The guy hit 265, 16 home runs. Had about 100 OPS plus. Good base runner. Really, really, really solid season there for a first place team. Kind of the anchor defensively for them, which is awesome. And you have Tristo, a uh, young guy in a rebuilding Dodgers team. Really, really young uh, superstar there in the making. Looks like he has a big time consistent profile. Should be one of those profiles that's uh, every year should be well above 110 OPS plus. Uh, big time power and eye and gap power so he hits the ball super hard uh, the only weakness is his uh, avoid k is a little low so he might strike out a little high like 28 percent is a tad high but for how hard he hits the ball and how good his eye is just kind of makes up for it so it's a really good young talent there uh, nice season out of him peterson probably would have won this award if he played a full season um per game he probably had the biggest impact him and ramirez probably would have been close if they both played the full season equally uh peterson was just looks like in my opinion a guy that's actually going to challenge Robert Poisson for some MVPs here in the next few seasons. I think uh, he's right on that level with Luke Leto and Poisson. Uh, just that much of a talent. It's absolutely shocking that the OSA is drunk enough to only have him as the 14th prospect. So that's one of the best prospects I've ever seen. Guy has 75 range in the outfield and the infield. Probably be second baseman for a couple of years there. Uh, 75 second base range is just outrageous. So he should be like a... Probably once he's peaked out, his defense there should be a 75 or maybe even an 80 rating at second base there. Uh, should be able to win multiple gold gloves. Could also play center field, obviously. Could play wherever he wants, really. Uh, the dude has over 360 ISO. He's hitting 340. It's just uh, that guy has potential to get 10 war. Uh, so it's just mind-boggling that um, the OSA isn't higher on him. I don't know what's up with that, but... Uh, like they are ratings wise, but they're just the ranking, the prospect ranking. So it's one of the best prospects you'll ever see. So yeah, I'd, I'd imagine him and Blossom are just going to be uh, pretty dominant over the next decade. And uh, it's going to make Colorado really tough to beat with all the talent they have, having a superstar like that. So an absolute insane season out of him too. Acock filled in really nicely for a lot of trout injuries this year. Uh, Acock was probably one of the biggest reasons Arizona is going to hold on here for a playoff spot. They uh, suffered a lot of injuries and, him stepping up and hitting 310 as a rook really, really helps solidify their outfield there. They probably 
uh, would have been a lot worse if it wasn't for him. So really, really big season of a rookie, um, really clutch. And so that really helps him out too. Really, really awesome talent there. there are a lot of good young center fielders between Rattray, Acock, and potentially Peterson and Jackson. Um, a lot of good young center fielders in TLG that uh, had huge seasons. So that's pretty cool. But like four of the top 10 are center fielders on the AL and NL combined. And then you have Angel. Angel here had a huge season. He had... Uh, Nice offensive year, 135 OPS plus. Really, really good all-round player. Um, actually, I shouldn't say all-round player. He's not really good defense and running, but uh, just really good all-around offensive profile more so. Uh, really, really nice uh, 7% strikeout, which is just crazy. Another guy, uh, it's like Ramirez, one of the lowest you'll see. Some of these computer-generated guys, they all, the computer-generated guys you'll notice in out of the park, they seem to uh, – make too many guys that have really high void K and low eyes seems to be these weird approaches. And they just put up these crazy seasons that aren't super realistic. Like there's like nobody in real life that puts up a uh, big power with only like six or 7% striker percentage. Um, and then doesn't walk a lot. Cause usually like goes hand in hand. Like you don't really have too many guys that would have really high void K, but like a low eye. Cause generally you'd have to be good at one to be good at the other. So a guy like Soto in real life is going to strike out a lot. Cause you're taking a lot of pitches and you get a lot of two strike counts. So you're going to take a lot of strikeouts, but generally it just it doesn't make sense for a guy to only have like a 35 eye, but like a 75 void K. Um, Cause like I said, they're kind of like a similar rating. So it's really always kind of interesting to me. So once you get in the future and you get more of these computer generated players, you get some weird seasons like Ramirez is that um, just kind of, Always kind of stuck out to me. But anyways, enough about that. Uh, really, really good season out of those guys. And then pitching-wise, we have Parton was a starter um, for almost most of the season, I guess, two-thirds of the season, and had some really good numbers. Almost three war in Colorado, which is always tough for a pitcher. Really, really good profile. Three really good pitches. Really good ratings across the board. Has really nasty uh, mentals, too. So just a guy that's going to be a really big impact player. Colorado has so many young stars. A really big uh, talent pool they built up there. Should be tough to beat. Uh, Maurice, my guy, had a really legendary relief pitcher season. Guy struck out 42% of guys, 146 uh, batting average again. So I think uh, the innings number wasn't super high on him. Well, it's still pretty high for a reliever, but just compared to some of the starting pitchers. But one of the best relief pitcher seasons you'll ever see of a rookie. Uh, 2.3 war is just pretty outrageous for a guy that didn't come up until like the end of May or something. I was trying to kind of be a little cheap on his manipulation for his service time. So tried to save him another year. But really, really huge huge innings totals um, when he did pitch. So he pitched almost 90 innings, uh, playing only about three-quarters of the year, two-thirds of the year. So really huge uh, huge season for me. Uh, getting a little bit cold lately, but uh, until recently, I think his FIP was at like 1.9 or something crazy. So just a really, really nasty talent uh, I have there coming up, which I'm excited about. Catlin is even uh, kind of in that same tier even with Maurice when it comes to the ratings. Uh, has a little bit more control than Maurice. That's a big difference. Um, both guys striking out about 41, 42% of guys. So really, really similar talents there. Both lefties, both electric stuff. Uh, Catlin's actually got the higher ratings, but Maurice has the third pitch. So depending on what you like better, that control or that really high rated third pitch. Uh, really interesting to see which one of these guys has a better career. Both guys should be really, really nasty regardless. Uh, love the season out of Catlin too. A bunch of Colorado guys in the running here, which is cool. Uh, Jeremy Russell had a huge season in Washington, really helped solidify their bullpen that's been really weak the last few years. He should be a uh, really big help to change that in the next few years here. Struck out 41% of guys, uh, like those last few guys we mentioned. Throws really hard. He's a fan favorite, which really helps. Uh, guys only hit 211 off him, so really big talent. Uh, monstrous 120 innings. Really, really uh, ate a ton of innings there for Washington. A pretty decent uh, statistical clip, so huge season out of him. And then you got Mike here and Pittsburgh, it looks like one of their next uh, really solid starters. This guy's been a starting pitching uh, factory here, and they've had a few old guys start to regress there. They got rid of Abreu. It looks like uh, Beaver's kind of getting old there, so nice to see some young arms coming up and should just continue the trend of Pittsburgh being one of the better pitching teams in baseball each year. Got a lot of young star pitchers coming up. He's one of them. And then next up, we have another reliever for Washington. So just a huge, huge um, – season out of those NL relievers. Uh, a lot of guys on here. Everyone's pretty much reliever except for Horner and uh, Parton started the year as a starter. So really cool to see all those good young pitchers in TLG. Should be nice for the future for a lot of teams here. And then just kind of looking at this page, looking for anything we might have missed. Um, you got a nice season out of Teague here. Another Colorado guy. Uh, only had one war. Uh, didn't have much power, so that kind of hurts the war total. But really solid shortstop for a playoff team that hit 270 and stayed healthy most of the year. Pretty cool stats um, out of him. Nice season. And then you got a big center fielder here. In first place team in St. Louis had almost two war. Uh, 
just a really good defensive player that hit for quite a bit of power. Only has 45 power rating, but uh, did hit 21 home runs, which is pretty interesting. I probably would have expected like 8 or 10. So interesting to see, especially as a ground ball hitter too. Um, really interesting to see how much power he hit for. Um, the base running was really low for some reason, but yeah, really interesting season out of him. Uh, really solid though. Good, nice two-war season on a playoff team. And then I really like Drew Bowser, too. That's another guy that didn't hit too well. San Diego's always a tough park to hit in, but really nice young talent. I've always tried to keep an eye on, see how he's doing. So really big-time uh, seasons out of the Rookies of the Year. And I think this video went so long, I don't think we'll do the pitchers um, for the Cy Young and a couple other awards. Maybe we'll do pitchers and defense next episode. This one went a little longer than I thought. I guess there was just a lot more good players than I expected. Um, when I first started the video, I knew there was a few good seasons, but the, the Rookie of the Year races had a little more depth than I remembered when I last looked. So really cool to see all those guys uh, be contributors and just no uh, no easy picks this year. Just I know, like I said, like Spar is kind of an easy pick in the NL, just like an absolute monster. Um, ran away, or sorry, in the AL, ran away with uh, Rookie of the Year there. It's just can't really vote anyone else when Spar put up those numbers. Kind of been some big rookie seasons out of pitchers and TLG, if you think about it. Spar this year, last year you had Soto um, in for the White Sox, had a huge year. And then I think in way back in 2021, you had the Cy Young and MVP out of Patino in San Diego. Uh, so really interesting how many good young uh, pitching seasons there's been. Uh, really, really nasty. Uh, one of the best reliever seasons you'll ever see of a rookie, too. And Tyler Gow probably probably would be a record. I don't think any rookie relievers ever got 3.7 more. So really, really cool to see um, a lot of a lot of talented players in TLG. So it should uh, you know, fare well for the future. All right, that'll be it for this episode. Next one, we'll do the pitching and defense. Cheers.